production in Ghana is basically traditional except for a few large-scale or commercial farmers who exhibit some level of organized system. This week on the Ghanaian Farmer we talk about sheep farming in the northern region specifically in Tamale. I'll be joined by veterinary officer Abdo to throw more light on all that you need to know about sheep farming. This program is proudly sponsored by Lizzie Tomato Mix. Uh, you can get interactive, share your views, send us your comments or your questions on our social media platform on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram and YouTube, The Ghanaian Farmer. You can follow me on my personal handle, Enyo Naumanya. I'm going for a quick break and when I come back, we'll start off with the conversation. Stay tuned. <music> northern region and this discussion is a little towards rearing ships if you are aspiring to become a livestock farmer we have varieties from the poultry to the guinea fowl to that to uh, goats pigs and today our focus the spotlight is on sheep farming we have a veterinary officer joining us today to tell us more about this livestock farming and his name is Ab Abu Kari Abdul Majid Thanks for joining us. Thank you. In a common term, when we say sheep farming, what are we trying to say? Uh, sheep farming, to my own definition, and there are a lot of definitions others can give, to me, is like railing sheep, particular sheep, either in small quantity or large quantity, for domestic or commercial purpose. Mm. Okay. Sheep farming. What are the requirements if I want to go into this livestock farming? What and what do I need to put in place before I start? Yeah, before you start sheep farming, uh, you have to start the place where you are to rear your animal. That is the sheep pen. Okay. And you just, just choose a place, but you have to choose a particular place, a nice place for them. Uh -huh. a, wat a waterlock area is not good for small ruminants. So you have to get a place, at least a little healing area or a dry place to construct your, pre -ship, uh, your sheep pen on that floor. Okay. Yeah. Which breed of sheep would you advise I start with? Well, we have two types of sheep. We have the Jaloki and we have the Sahelian. Okay. Uh -huh. So we have the short type and we have the long type. Which type do we have or do we see behind us? Uh, with this one... That is the Jalonki type, but they are crossed. You see the male? Mm -hmm. uh, with that one, we can say they are cross type. It's both this uh, Jalonki and the Sahelian type. Okay. Uh -huh. And it works perfectly? It works perfectly. Okay. So how many of these would you suggest I start off with? I mean, the quantity-wise. Uh, how many would you advise? Male, how many should I buy? And then female, how many should I buy? And that, as I said earlier, it depends on your capacity. The capital I'm using. The capital that you are using. Okay. So I would advise that you go in, you go, maybe if you have to start in small, in small quantity, you get 10. Okay. One male mm -hmm. and maybe nine females. Okay. Or one male mm -hmm. to 15, uh, one male to 14 females. Okay. I think that one is good. All right. Oh, okay. um, at what age does a sheep get ready for pregnancy or crossing? Uh, usually... It depends on the breed, but some are starting earlier. Let's say maybe from seven to eight months. They are ready. They are ready. They can be crossed. They can, they can be crossed. Okay. When you cross a sheep, how, or first of all, when a sheep female, the female sheep, when it's on heat, how long does it last for? Uh, usually, let's take it almost a week. It can be on heat for a week. Week. Let's take three to four or five days. And how many times am I supposed to cross them and then expect pregnancy afterwards? Uh, when, when you expect that they are, when you suspect that they are on heat, mm -hmm. uh, you can't start the day that you have seen it. Okay. And you start crossing it with a meal. Okay. Uh -huh. So it's lucky that it may just pick. Does crossing, should crossing be done intentionally or I can just leave them like this and they will know the male will know the female is on heat and it will cross each other. Yes. Uh, 
you can just leave them. You know, they have some. They also discharge some hormones when they are on heat. Okay, the female. The female. Okay. So you see the male usually go around and be sniffing their mm -hmm. other. The females. The, the, anus. the anus. Okay. Uh, so if someone is on heat, mm -hmm. they will detect it and you see them. They will start crossing it. Okay. Even if there are two or three, you see them. They will chase them, be fighting mm -hmm. just for them to cross. Okay. Mm. How many times should I feed my sheep in a day? Uh, usually three times is okay, but others is continuous feeding. Mm. But in terms of commercial purpose or to reduce your cost, mm -hmm. you will time yourself. Mm -hmm. In the morning you can give them, in the afternoon you can give them, mm. then in the evening you can give them. Mm. But if it's semi-intensive, you can decide to just, uh, uh, semi-intensive, uh, semi you can decide to just give them once or twice, mm. depending how you want it. You can start to give it in the morning mm. and leave it in the afternoon and give it in the evening. Or you can give it morning, afternoon, mm. then in the evening you leave it. All right. What are the advantages of a farmer who confined his sheep as against the ones that leave them to go and graze in the bush and then come back? Uh, with the, the advantage on, of a farmer leaving his animals in a confined area, uh, there, it's a lot there. So I'll start with one, mm -hmm. the animal doesn't lose its energy. Mm -hmm. The feed that it consumes, mm -hmm. it converts that energy that it will lose to a fatness. So the animal can grow fast. Mm -hmm. the product, uh, 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 let's say the chance of it multiplying is very fast. Mm -hmm. It also reduces risk of, I mean, contamination of disease from other. Okay. Uh, the outside area. Mm. Uh -huh. and, and the ones who feed freely about till the evening and they come back home? Uh, so those, the, the, those less compared to those who are feeding mm. outside, mm. Uh, those it can easily be affected with viral diseases. Okay. It can pick rubber. Mm. It also loses their energy. Mm. Uh -huh. and they, mm. About the feed, I see those ones are eating some mashed feed. What is the feed made of? Uh, with this one, it's, it's made of with rice brown okay. and kajano kaja waste. Okay. Uh -huh. But sometimes they do provide them with uh, cassava pills. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they dry a uh, straw of rice, mm -hmm. rice straw. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, they also provide them with uh, uh, this waste fly from cornmeal. Okay. And they base it with the uh, wheat brown. Uh, with rice brown radar. Okay. You know, that's the feed that we All never right. give them. Is there any special nutrient derived from this prepared feed as against the ones that consume in the bush? Yeah, with this one, yes. Uh, uh, let's say the rice brown, it never gives them energy. Mm. With uh, this, uh, the waste fly from. Uh, Corn meal, mm -hmm. it's a mixture of a lot of things. Okay. So I suspect that, oh, I this strongly one is believe more that. Nutritious. It will be more nutritious. Than the usual grass. They than go the all usual right. grass. Yeah. Okay, so viewers, you're still watching The Ghanaian Farmer. My name is Enyonam, and my guest is Abdul. He's a veterinary officer, and he supervises the ships or the livestock here in uh, Kujo, Abimash Farms in Tamale. And so we're going for a quick breather. When we come back, we'll talk about the marketing and many other things, infections, many other things that you need to know. In case you are aspiring to become a sheep farmer, I'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thanks for staying. You're welcome back. You can get interactive on our social media platform on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. As the Ghanaian farmer, the Ghanaian farmer. My name is Anyuna. Many thanks to Lizzie and Leap Tomato Mix for sponsoring or supporting our show. Abdul, mm -hmm. at what age can I start selling my sheep? Uh, most usually when it's when they are about six months to seven months, you can start starting. You can start selling them. How to long make can money. a sheep live for? Mm. Let's say two to three years or more than that. Okay. Mm. What infections affect um, sheep? Because we know with poultry, we know what happens, the bear flu, 
and I just learned about guinea fowl. Oh. They also have their own infection. Okay. So how about sheeps? Sheeps, they also have a lot of infections. Mm. Others are bacteria, others, others are virus. Mm. For virus, we have the PPR, mm. we have um, anthrax, mm. uh, we have uh, this thing, even brucellosis also, which is uh, virus, is also kite them. What symptoms should I see? Signs? Should I see and then start calling you, Abdul? You have to come by the farm and check on my sheep. What should I see? Yes, first of all, you start. Usually, what you normally see is that the animal will be off feet. Okay. It will be very dull, mm -hmm. maybe rough coat. Mm -hmm. And others, you see nostal discharges. Others, you see recrimination. Others, you see them running. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you can even enter their pen. If you want to see those animals that are not feeling well, mm -hmm. you can start clapping or just making a sound for them to react. react. Okay. But some, those who are not really healthy mm -hmm. so that they are very dull mm -hmm. with that one you can't okay so start how, many times, how many times should i uh, should you my vets pass by the farm in a month how many times do you pass by in a month at least about three to five times that one is okay every week mm -hmm. or in every week you can say just pass by mm -hmm. uh, whether they call you mm -hmm. or they didn't call you just pass by and see what is happening okay. but usually it will depend on you the farmer mm -hmm. You have to alert the vet. Mm -hmm. uh, I've suspected this. But in case you, ha you handle everything, mm -hmm. most of the farm or most of the animals to the vet, mm -hmm. at least you should have a particular, you should have a timetable. You should time that you normal mm -hmm. visit. It's in a week, you can start to visit twice or once. Mm -hmm. But with a month, mm -hmm. at least five, it's okay. Okay. Between goats and sheep, which one is more preferred when it comes to marketing? Or consumption uh, with that one it will depend on the area of railing mm. uh -huh. in the southern sector as uh, I learned most of the people around mm -hmm. are preferred goods mm. than sheep mm -hmm. but in the north mm -hmm. we prefer the sheep okay. than the goods okay. uh -huh. so in terms of marketable the sheep will buy more mm. than the goods but in terms of uh, uh, production mm -hmm. or profitability mm -hmm. Goats usually multiply faster than the sheep. Goats multiply faster, faster than, than the sheep. sheep. Yeah. Okay. Um, are you able to tell me an average price of those uh, sheep we are seeing there? Um, with this ones, mm -hmm. it's around 400 to 500. Per one? Per one. Okay. Uh -huh. Around 400 to 500 you can get. Okay. Or from 350. Mm -hmm. You can get at least a little bit matured one, but 300 downwards, it will be younger. Okay, mm. I see. A another thing I want to know, uh, what are the difficulties with livestock farming? Which of them do you see as a very, very difficult uh, uh, one to, you know, rear as a farmer? Uh, compared to sheep, sheep, sheep to that of... Let's do sheep, let's do pig and goats, or even cow. Cow. Mm -hmm. So which one is very difficult yes, to... Yes, yes. That needs more attention, that needs a lot of investment and all that. Which one? Uh, let me say pigs. If you compare small man sheep and goats to that of pig, pig could be a little bit costly okay. than, 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 than the small man. Okay. Mm. The weather, uh, we are now in the dry season here. And then we have a wet season. We have sunny and all that. I see them lying down on the sun. Does it affect them in any way? No, it doesn't affect them. Okay. Sometimes, because of the weather is, for now, you can see the weather is too cold. Uh -huh. uh, so they, prefer, they also prefer heat. Uh, so that's why they are lying there. The sun. Yeah. Now, I, I realize that their droppings are all over the place. Yeah. They are lying in it. They are walking about. Doesn't it have any negative effect? Uh, in terms of, in terms of you, in, let's say in terms they are in their pen, you can find them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they usually need cleaning. Okay. Other than that, their urine and their droppings, mm -hmm. it can, it can have some effects on them. Okay. In terms of like maybe 
when you live it for a very long time, it produces gas, okay. the ammonia gas okay. that can affect them. Okay, so in that uh -huh. case, how By, many times should I clean my sheep pen? Uh, at least a month, in every month, you have to clean the pen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this place is so open, uh -huh. so for that matter, you see, before it will, uh, unless it's rainy season time, okay. but in terms of it will, the urine and the contamination is not going to be it will not be high. It will not be high. Okay. But when you confine them, uh -huh. they are dropping. They are discharge. Uh, uh, they discharge the unit. Uh -huh. Problem. Yeah. All right. Are there any health benefit when you consume, sh uh, you know, sheep? Um, I know it's not just purposely for uh, selling, but definitely restaurant, hotels, even individual homes. When you buy. Um, sheep and you slaughter it, you consume it. Yes, you consume so, it. So, do we have any special benefits you, you derive from consuming? Yes, uh, at least, if, uh, apart from protein. it being mm -hmm. feed mm -hmm. or food for us, mm -hmm. it also provides protein. Okay. Uh, and the protein too also help us to, I mean, grow mm -hmm. and maybe wound tissue and other things, it helps us to the body to recover certain. Uh, diseases. Mm. All right. Mm. So, Abdul, well, we are going for a breather. We will come back to discuss about the services you render to farmers okay. and what your service charges are like. I mean, how you connect with farmers and the kind of various support you render to them. So, viewers, you are still watching the journey in Tama. My name is Enyana, and the spotlight is on sheep farming here in Tamale. And so, we are going for 60 seconds on our break. Let's get to know. What is training in agriculture sector? When we come back, we'll wrap up on the interview. Stay tuned. was 60 seconds on our break. My name is Senyunam. Remember that if you're out there shopping for the home, you'd want to pick one or two lazy or new tomato mix to cook your meal because it contains a lot of vitamins and makes your meal delicious. And so today our focus is on sheep farming. Abdul, the services of veterinary officer, how important or relevant are your services to the development and the progress of my farm? Yeah, it's very, very important that if you open your farm, at least you get a veterinary personnel to assist you to for the development or well-being of your animals. Uh -huh. So it's very good that you have a veterinary personnel because he, normal, he will normally advise you the technical know-how that you should do, the feeding, and sometimes if there is a need for him to attend to them in terms of treatment, he will do that in terms of vaccination. He will do that. About vaccination, do you vaccinate them? Yes, we do. Uh, how often do you vaccinate them? Uh, uh, usually, we have PPR, PPR vaccine. That one, every six months, you can vaccinate them. Okay. But if you are suspecting and trust too, mm -hmm. you can vaccinate them. In terms of any outbreak within mm -hmm. or around, mm -hmm. you can decide to quickly come and vaccinate your animals against those diseases. Okay. But so if you are with small remnants, uh -huh. Well, PPR is usually a common disease that always hits on them every month or every, any time. Oh, every yeah. month? Every year rather. Okay. Every year. Okay. Uh, so with that one, mm. you have to do it. Mm. You have to continue doing it. I see. With the, the male, at times you see them hitting or locking horns. What, what causes that aggression? 
with that one, I would say it's a natural thing that usually happens. Or sometimes, in terms, as I told you earlier, when they are when they want to cross a female, uh, so all of them will be rushing to do, and the other one, the other one may be preventing the other one. So you are there, and you see them uh, fighting. Fighting. Okay. Uh, well, well, when when you going to sell your animals? Let's say you're wearing sheep. At the end of the day, when you want to sell them, which one do you advise we sell more? Is it a male or the female? Uh, usually, it's the um, females. We should sell them more of the female. In terms of. I don't know. In terms of uh, maybe you want to move your animal or you want to. I don't know. I don't know. I, for what, what purpose I mean, are you I'm selling, selling them? The no, I'm, 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 for instance, you are rearing for selling. For, for selling, yeah. yeah. So if the time is due, let's say Easter uh, time for it, okay. it's a festive season. Yeah. And I want to go and make some money in the market. Uh, it's the meals. It's the meals rather. You want rather. to take the meal. You want to, yeah, you and take the, 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 female. the females. Why? Because compared to the number. Uh -huh. Uh, one male can manage with ten females. Okay. Uh, so I'll I'll advise that you should sell the males mm. then to, to that of uh, the, uh, the the females. Okay. Sheep farming is it profitable from your point of view? Yeah, it's very profitable. Why it do you is. say that? Uh, usually, the the multiplication of them is very faster mm. as compared to cattle. Mm. Uh, so. Sheep farming is very, very highly profitable. Okay. Mm, Abdul, so we are about wrapping up our interview. If there is a would-be farmer or a startup farmer who is about to, after your interview, says, okay, I think I want to try my hands on sheep farming, what advice would you give them? Yes, the advice I will, I will, give, I will give to that person is, first of all, you have to consider your pen, the construction of your pen. You have to also gather your feet very well. Then you go in for the healthy ones. If you go to the market to buy animals, you don't just buy any animals. But how will I know? Is that me? I'm an ordinary lady. Yeah, usually you go in for the young ones. Then, okay. then Between what age are we looking at? The four months? The four months to six months. Okay. But any sheep that is more than that, usually you don't buy. Mm. Uh, so... Maybe from, let's say, six months to one year, the animals you can still buy them. But those from those above that range, mm. I would advise that you shouldn't buy them. Okay. Uh -huh. And you go in for the healthy one too. Mm. Maybe if you don't know the farmer, at the, uh, the marketer, mm. you can seek advice from him. Okay. But preferably, if you want to start your sheep farming, mm -hmm. Is prefer you go to a reliable farmer mm. like this place. Mm -hmm. We are treating our animals. We are vaccinating them. We are doing everything. So when you come to buy from us, you are safe. Yeah, you are safe. Okay. We'll give you the, the right ones that you should start with mm. as com compared to mm. going to the market. Even if you want to go to the market, you can get a, a veterinary personnel to follow you to assist you, okay. or a person who know more about them mm. to assist you to buy. What are some difficulties associated with your line of work? Uh, Sometimes, uh, because our service, most of our service is payable. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, by, by the farmer. Uh, you know, are you not working for Abai? No, 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 we are not doing that. <laughs> there are some we are doing, but some no. Okay. Uh, because, you know, we, a private we, veterinary officer. Not a private, I'm a government veterinary officer. So why, is that, why should the farmer, why should I pay you? You yeah. take your salary from government. So why should I? <laughs> <laughs> After, why am I paying you? Most of, most of, most of, uh, most of the drugs, uh -huh. uh, it's, it's not free. Okay. And most of the vaccines too, it's not free. Okay. Initially it was free yeah. that you vaccinate. Okay. And maybe government would just give you the vaccine to go and vaccinate the animal. But this time it's payable. Even some are uh, cash and carry. Uh -huh. So that's why the farmer should pay. When you go around, what are some of the complaints you get from farmers? Uh, uh, the most of the complaints that we get, uh, some of the animals have been dying. And some are complaining like the feed. This time, there's no feed, there's no water. Mm. 
for their animals. Mm. Uh, that's the complaint. But mm. some complaints, you don't just take them as granted. You have to follow up and see what mm. is happening. Mm. Because some of them, the fault is from them. Mm. They are not serious in their family. Mm. Some people are just buying it to just leave them to roam about, mm. but not to keep. So that's the complaint that we normally get. Mm. Uh -huh. All right. That has been an enlightening conversation with Abdul Majid. The other name, I write it on TV. <laughs> 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 My name is Anjana. Thanks for watching. And next week we'll come your way again with another farmer. But you know what? This whole month, it is the northern region edition of the Ghanaian farmer, specifically in Tamale. So uh, from here, we are going to meet. We can't come to Tamale and go without doing share butter. It's not possible. So we are going for uh, another interview, but uh, until then, it's a bye for now. Thank you. <laughs>